Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 4, Chemical Bonding. And now we are in the subtopic of 4.4, Intermolecular Forces of Attraction, part 2 of the video. So in this video, we're going to learn about the description of the intermolecular forces, focusing on the hydrogen bonding here. Also, we're going to see about the effect of hydrogen bonding on the following physical properties, which includes the boiling point, the solubility, as well as the density of water in comparison to ice. For the linear outcome of A1 and B, we have looked about that in part 1 of the video, which is in the previous video. So for now, let us focus on the subtopic of 4.4 part 2, which is in this video first. So hydrogen bonding. So hydrogen bonding is basically a special type of dipole-dipole interaction that happens in the hydrogen atom in a polar bond, for example, NH, OH, OFH. So you can remember it as F O N here. Fun with the negatively charged electronegative atom, for example, fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. So let's say if you have the FH1, which is HF here, so a partially positive charge and a partially negative charge, which is a polar bond. So the, the fluorine atom here, which or the hydrogen atom here, can make an interaction or a force of attraction between the hydrogen as well as the fluorine of another molecule. So there are going to be a forces of attraction here as well as another forces of attraction here. And these forces of attraction that occurs between the fluorine and hydrogen of another molecule is known as the hydrogen bonds. And the hydrogen bonds are special because they are stronger than the van der Waals forces but it is weaker than the covalent bond. So in terms of strength, the covalent bond, which is here is known as the covalent bond, which is the real bond. The covalent bond is going to be stronger than the hydrogen bond, but the hydrogen bond is stronger than the dipole-dipole forces, and it is also stronger than the London dispersion forces. So you have learned about these two in this previous video, which is these two here representing a van der Waal forces. Okay? So for the hydrogen bond, hydrogen bond can exist in HF as shown as the dotted line here. So this is an example of hydrogen bond, similar goes to here. And for the hydrogen molecule, the hydrogen molecule can form four hydrogen bond per one molecule of water. So this is how the, what the hydrogen bond can be formed between the water molecule from a partially negative charge of oxygen to a partially positive charge of the hydrogen of another molecule. All right? And when we are learning about the hydrogen bond, we now going to look into the effect of the hydrogen bond to the physical properties. So we're going to look about these three physical properties, which namely the boiling points. Next, we have the solubility of the simple covalent bond, for example, ammonia or ethanol in water. And lastly, we're going to compare the density of water and ice by, it, by relating the hydrogen bond. So now let us look into the boiling point first. So the effect of hydrogen bond on the boiling point. So as what you can see here, the boiling point of water, the hydrogen fluoride and ammonia are strangely high, sangat tinggi, berbanding dengan hydride of other element in the other group. And this is because the water molecule, the hydrogen fluoride and ammonia, which is the atom of oxygen, fluorine and nitrogen, F O N, they can form water, they can form hydrogen bonding in between water molecule, hydrogen fluoride molecule between themselves, as well as the ammonia molecules. And this causes it to be having a stronger forces of attraction and hence more energy is needed in order to break the bond. And that is why water, hydrogen fluoride, and ammonia appears to be higher on the bonding point. And as what you can also tell that, the strength of the hydrogen bonding, which is H2O, HF, and NH3, 
if you were to look into the polarity of the atom, you know that the fluorine gonna be the most electronegative atom in the period two. Because in the period two, you have fluorine, which is in group 17, you have oxygen, and then you have nitrogen. So group 16 and then group 15. So if you were to look at the polarity, you will expect that the FH bond gonna be the highest, followed by the OH bond, which is in water, and then followed by the NH bond, which is in ammonia. Okay. However, what really happening was the position of them gonna changes. So it's gonna be the water molecule first, which is the highest here, which is 100 degrees Celsius, followed by hydrogen fluoride, then ammonia. The question is, why? So the reason for this was, it's not totally depending on the polarity. Kita hanya bukan sahaja melihat kepada polarity. But we are also looking at the number of hydrogen bond that can be formed. Okay, number of hydrogen bond yang terhasil. So even though the fluorine is more electronegative than oxygen, however, the water molecule has a higher bonding point than HF because there are four hydrogen bonding per water molecule compared to only two hydrogen bonding per HF molecule, as what I have shown in the second slide just now. And as a result, because the water molecule has more hydrogen bonding, so more energy is needed to break the bond. And because of that, the water molecule is going to have the highest point, point, and the second followed by the HF bond. And for the, HM, for the HF bond, uh, it can form a stronger hydrogen bonding because fluorine is more electronegative than nitrogen. And that is why the sequence is going to be H2O followed by HF and then followed by ammonia here. Okay? And now we're going to look into the effect of hydrogen bond in solubility. So basically water is a good solvent for liquid and gases containing a small polar molecule because the polar molecule can form a hydrogen bond with the water. So let's say if we have a water molecule, if we have a polar molecule of ammonia, it can form hydrogen bond with the water molecule. And because they can form water molecule, it will solubilize in water here. Okay? And of course, they they're not going to be all organic molecule that contain NH2 or OH going to be soluble. Ada juga yang tidak soluble. Kenapa? So this is because when the molecular mass is too high ataupun terlalu, terlalu tinggi, the non-polar hydrocarbon which consists of CH portion ataupun CH part, where the CH part here representing a hydrophobic area. So the hydrophobic area, phobic refers to phobia, which means that it hits water. So dia tidak suka kan air. So when the hydrocarbon gets larger and larger, it's gonna make it more insoluble in water. And hence the solubility gonna decreases when the molecular mass of the organic compound increases. So as what you can see here, even though this molecule, for example, C5H11NH2, they can form hydrogen bond. Tetapi, because of the presence of the hydrocarbon portion here, which is very, very large, and they have a hydrophobic area, it will reduce down the solubility in water. Okay, since it has a hydrocarbon, and the hydrocarbon is hydrophobic, in which it does not like to be soluble in water. Alright? And now we're going to look into the third physical properties, which is the density. And the speciality of water is that the water can form ability to form an extensive hydrogen bonding network. So, pillar water is cooled down to 0 degrees Celsius, which is in ice, they will arrange themselves in a tetrahedral arrangement. 
So when water is cooled to the solid, the water molecule will arrange themselves to form the tetrahedral arrangement in such a way that it's going to maximize the amount of hydrogen bonding between them. So they're going to arrange themselves so that they can get the best amount of hydrogen bonding. And when they do that, this will leave a relatively large amount of empty space in between the water molecule that has been arranged. And this gives rise to the open structure. And when they have the open structure, it will cause the volume to get higher. Okay, lagi banyak isi padu kosong dekat sini. So the volume will get higher. So when the volume got higher, the density will get reduced. So when the density get reduced, it will float in water. And that is why bila korang beli air, you're going to see that, let's say if you have a ice tea, you're going to see that the ice float in water because they have an empty space where it's going to increase the volume and reduces the density. So you can relate this two together by looking into the formula of density where mass is divided by volume. So because of the tetrahedral arrangement, the, they're going to have an open space here. So the open space here will have a lot of empty space or volume here. So when the volume got higher, the density will get lower. So when the density lets go lower, it will float in water. And this is the reason why ice float in water. All right. So I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye.